Chapter 15 of The Alley Cat's Kitten. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Sunshine Rivera. The Alley Cat's Kitten by Caroline Fuller. Octavia. They went in and uncovering the basket allowed Weejums to stretch her cramped paws and tail on the most beautiful plush sofa that she had ever seen and gaze with interested green eyes on the pictures and statuary around her. There were several long mirrors in the room and Weejums admired herself in each by turn until she came to what seemed another when greatly to her astonishment her own reflection slanted back its ears and spit at her. "'What cat is this?' asked a strange voice, and Weejum saw her reflection hastily picked up by a lady in a lace gown, while the reflection continued to spit and growl. "'We thought twas Octavia,' faltered Marian. "'But that must be Octavia in your arms, and, oh, I'm afraid we've carried off someone else's cat.' "'She's the living image of Octavia, if you have,' said Mrs. Slocum, kneeling down to examine Weejum's. Where did you find her, Marion? And the story of Weejum's discovery was told, while Mrs. Slocum thanked and petted Marion for all the troubles she had taken. It might be Octavia's own kitten, Mrs. Slocum said, except that Octavia never had one so like herself. Your house may be beautiful, said Weejum's to Octavia, but your manners are certainly common. And before anyone could interfere, she had dabbed Octavia on the nose with a most unladylike spit. Fennels! Fennels! called Mrs. Slocum. Marion, dear, would you mind putting the strange cat in her basket for a minute? That's right. Thank you, dear. Now, if you don't know who she is, why not take her back to Montrose and put an advertisement in the paper? Somebody must be feeling terribly at losing her, and I should really like to know where she came from. Marion was going to spend the night with me and go to the cat show tomorrow said Mrs. Armstrong. I suppose there is no great hurry about returning the cat. It isn't as if twas a baby. Oh, Auntie, I hope no one will answer the advertisement, said Marion, squeezing the basket. Only think of having an Octavia of my very own. Well, we'll see you tomorrow, said Mrs. Slocum, as her guests took their leave, and parting spits were exchanged between the two ladies of tortoiseshell complexion. So it happened that when Mrs. Wood and her children stopped in utter joy and astonishment before Octavia's cage at the cat show, they received a cordial welcome from the two strange ladies and a little girl. It's Weejums, exclaimed Mrs. Wood and Franklin in the same breath. It's Weejums, said Kenneth. Somebody stole her and fixed her up for the show. Doesn't she look whacking, said Franklin. They're not going to keep her, though. Somebody will be arrested for this. It's not either, said Eunice, struggling to keep back the tears, for at first she too had thought it was. Don't you see? Her expression is entirely different. It's a wise child that knows its own cat, and Eunice, the little mother, could not be deceived in her weejums. Have you lost a kitty? asked Marion, taking Eunice by the hand. A sweet kitty that looks just like this one? And do you live in Montrose? I think I saw your brother on the street. Yes, 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 answered Eunice to each question. We jumps fell through the floor onto an old lady's head and this was almost too much to recount. The old lady chased her out of the house. She didn't come home last night. Well, I found her, said Marion triumphantly. So don't feel bad anymore. I found her, do you hear? She's at auntie's house now and you can take her right home. Would you mind telling me where you got the cat? Asked Mrs. Slocum, politely, of Mrs. Wood. In Alliston, where we lived, was the answer. She came to us in such a strange way. And she started to tell the story of the alley cat. But Mrs. Slocum interrupted her quite excitedly. In Alliston, did you say? Why, we have relatives in Alliston. And Octavia has visited there with us. Haven't you, Puskins? And she had some kittens there, too. But they all died, that is, except a hideous brindled thing that ran away. We've always felt ashamed of that kitten. Then if Octavia's kitten was brindle, our cat that the little girl found is Octavia's grandchild, 
said Mrs. Wood. We've always felt that Weejums must have good blood, although she is sometimes a little brusque in her manners. Can't you all come home to luncheon with me? asked Mrs. Armstrong, and see your cat? After all, it may not be the same one. It would be too extraordinary if it was. We'll come and see you with pleasure, said Mrs. Wood, thanking her, but the children were to meet their uncle for luncheon at Dorland's. He has promised them a lobster, and I'm hoping that this excitement over Weejums will make them forget it. So after they had admired a few more of the cats, particularly the Angoras, which looked, Kenneth said, as if their fur needed weeding, the whole party took the elevated to West 81st Street and walked over to Mrs. Armstrong's house, opposite the park, where, in an upper window lined with Nile green pillows, a familiar form was balanced upon a pot of white azalea, catching flies. It is! cried Eunice, giving Marian a hug. Yes, it is! Are you sure? asked Marian, a little disappointed. I was almost hoping it wouldn't be, so that I could keep her. She's just so sweet, you know? I know better than anyone, said Eunice, seriously. You see, she's my cat. Of course, you wouldn't exactly understand my feelings about her if you never had a cat. Weejums was delighted to see Eunice, but howled wrathfully when, after luncheon, she was thrust into her basket and carried back to the hated boarding house. It won't be for long, Eunice whispered to her cat as she was banished to the laundry, instead of being allowed to spend the evening in the parlor. The children pleaded for her and explained to the old lady that it must have been much more painful for Weejums to fall heavily on a hard bald head than it was for the head to catch a nice furry Weejums. But when the lady took off her cap, it really did seem, judging from the appearance of the head, as if Weejums had danced a hornpipe on it before reaching the floor. The cat mustn't come into the front of the house again the landlady decided, and was not at all moved when Eunice said pitifully, it's an accident that might happen to anyone who tried to lie down a hole. Both cats slept in the laundry, but as Weejums was in disgrace, Mrs. Winslow would not speak to her, and ignoring the other half of their bed, went off and lay gingerly on some bars of soap. It was in the middle of the night that Mrs. Winslow waked herself with a great sneeze and saw Weejum sniffing nervously around a crack in the floor. Mice? asked Miss Winslow, quite forgetting that they were not on speaking terms. No, smoke, answered Weejums with contempt. It is evident that the two sides of your nose don't match any better than your eyes. There shouldn't be smoke at this time of night, said Mrs. Winslow uneasily. Should there? No, said Weejums. There never has been before. There's a broken pane of glass in the outside window, said Miss Winslow, jumping up. The smoke is getting so thick we'd better go out in the garden. I think we ought to tell somebody about it, said Weejums. Why should we? asked Mrs. Winslow, lazily. No one else sleeps in the laundry. Besides, you couldn't get upstairs. Yes, I could, through the hole where they passed the dishes in the butler's pantry. Hannah left it open last night. If I'd known that, said Mrs. Winslow crossly, we could have slept in the parlor tonight. Why didn't you? But at that moment, a larger puff of smoke came through the crack, and Mrs. Winslow made a leap for the window, found the broken pane of glass, and was gone. Weejums ran into the butler's pantry, took a still higher leap to the little window, and in another minute was scratching and mewing at Mrs. Wood's door. Be still, Weejums, she called softly, so as not to wake the children. Go downstairs, bad cat. Oh, please come, called Weejums again and again. Please, please come. And at last, Mrs. Wood went. But before Weejums could guide her to the laundry, she had smelled the smoke. And in a few minutes, the household was roosed. People bundled out of their beds and into the street just in time. Before the flames came up through the laundry floor, and the engines were in the yard. The fire was soon out, owing, as the fireman said, to its having been discovered so early, and all the boarders gathered around Weejums with embraces and grateful tears. It's bad to have your head clawed, said the queerest of the old ladies, who had given her room attired in a flannel petticoat and a sealskin jacket, but it's much worse to be burned alive. 
And before Weejums went away, all the old ladies clubbed together and bought her an uncomfortable silver collar with her name on it and a jingling padlock that scared the mice. But something had happened that more than made up to Weejums for having to wear this collar and seemed grateful for it. When the fire was over, Mrs. Winslow was found in the backyard, up a tree. End of chapter 15